Alright guys, so you love the first video of Epic Battle Simulator, or Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, as it seems to have been renamed. Right now, we're looking at over 25,000 units on the battlefield. But interestingly enough, this will not be a normal battlefield, guys. We have 20,000 Heavy Knights versus about 5,290, I think it's 96, Castle Defenders, who are going to be a mix of archers and these blue knights here. So you can see these guys don't look as heavily armored, right? However, what is cool is this is a castle siege. Look at this. We got some red knights. We've got archers on the hills there. You can see them chanting and raising their fists in the air. So interestingly enough, oh my god, and then we got phalanx men with shields and pikes and then maybe some more archers in the back. I'm not entirely sure. So it's a mixed bag for the defenders. But the beauty of this is the developer, Robert, for this game has been up dating and upgrading the AI, right? So you gotta remember, I gotta say, like, when you look at scenes like this, you're like, oh my god. Like, once I feel like that the animations, the combat animations, aren't as repetitive, and right there, like, everyone's kind of, like, staying too nice in a line, you know what I mean? Like, as once there's more variation in the unit animations, the more immersed you're gonna be. Look at those heavy knights just cutting through that army. You can see how devastating these guys are. But there's actually first person going to be available. They, it, like, this is really exciting stuff. And I think what's impressive about this, there's two things that impress me most about this game. First off, is it's a single developer making it. Secondly, it can handle so many entities in, a, in the same battle. Now, I wonder if maybe that's the trade-off for having things kind of... You know, like, the animations are more or less... There's only a few for each unit, right? But the battles truly are epic. Like, 25,000 people invading a castle. Castle sieges. So interesting. I One of my favorite castle games of all time, like, truly a really great castle simulator game, was Stronghold. I remember getting Stronghold when I was in high school. And... I remember like getting it early as a Christmas present and so what I did, oh man, I, I, I opened the box, opened the CD, took the CD out, put the CD case back in the box, closed the box, and then my parents wrapped it. And so by the time Christmas came around, I had already played it for probably a month. And I was like, oh, Stronghold, I'm so excited to play this game, but dude, what the beauty of Stronghold was the fact that it wasn't like an Age of Empires, because at the time there wasn't anything where like you built the walls, you got to hand build the walls. Look at all those arrows being fired in the air, right? And I think like, anyway, so back to that. Because like there's nobody really on the walls. There's a few units running around on the walls, and I'm not sure if that's like intentional or not. But if you had accurate, if you could make some of the game, like some of the core mechanics, <coughs> excuse me, of a stronghold, where you could put thousands of people on a wall, where you could handcraft the walls, ditches, you could have pike ditches, drawbridges, imagine catapults, ballistas, battering rams, siege towers. And you know, obviously that would that that would be some advanced stuff. These heavy knights are slaughtering these guys. The castle defenders I feel like have very little chance, but no one's broken into the castle itself where all the shield and pikemen are. So it's going to be interesting to see those guys battle the heavy knights, especially densely packed like that. And it looks like they're supported by archers. And the knights are going to be funneling in. So I think the knights are going to take some heavy casualties. Right now, the knights are at 8,900. Castle defenders have dropped to 2,400. So each faction, the attackers and defenders, are down to half of what they started the battle with. Look at these archers, dude. It's they're just getting wrecked. So once there's like more variation for the units um, In how they look and how they you know, maybe walk not everybody walks the same like I feel like we could make movies using this game You know what I mean? Like we could recreate almost any battle we want. He's done Lord of the Rings There's been some Game of Thrones. Oh, here we go. Here's the heavy knights versus the heavy pikemen. This can be interesting Oh, man, they're, they're some of the guys on the front lines are getting chopped up 
and the arrows are just pouring in. So I think, oh wow, actually, they're making pretty decent headway. Maybe this unit is kind of a cheaper unit. But 25,000 units in a castle siege. This has been made by one guy. Look at how much armor is just on the ground. It looks like it looks like the heavy knights have like fallen on top of the dead spearmen. So let's see. Heavy knights, there are still 7,000 and castle defenders numbers are dwindling fast. They're only at 1,200. So enemies killed. Heavy knights have killed 4,000 of the what 500 5,000 couple hundred. And then the castle defenders have killed 13,000 heavy knights. The archers, it would be cool to see like a unit recap, you know, of where the kills are coming from, you know? Is it the archers that are doing the most? It's gotta be. As you see the knights running in, you just see blood splurting off of them. Oh man, dude, once they once they cut through the shieldmen and get to the archers, this is gonna be over. Heavy knights, 5,500. Castle defenders, only 500. We see where this is going, but when you see that bird's eye view of the castle, imagine being able to put like a little ballista or a catapult or a mangonel. Mangonel is like a catapult type thing that instead of throwing one rocket, it like has a shotgun effect where it's numerous stones, right? You could really make some of the best castle sieges like from a viewer standpoint. I think the Total War games do a pretty good job about it. My friend Pixelated Apollo has some pretty epic castle sieges and my buddy Diplex does some on occasion too. And those are pretty epic, like seeing the seeing like a movie. Look at this, those poor archers. But there is he has the developer has made it so you can take control of one unit. Imagine being one archer on top of that tower and just slinging arrows for like 30 minutes down on the castle attackers. Look at that scene, guys. All right, so we've talked about how many units you can fit onto a battlefield. This is a test and you can see it is kind of laggy. And there's a reason for that. There are over 100,000 units on this field right now. So you can see a, a ton of heavy knights. And this, are these Roman legionnaires? It looks like they're Roman legionnaires. Look at those red shields. Oh yes. We've got golden armored ones and silver armored ones. I wonder if they're different classes. So I'm assuming it looks like it's saying Persians and Romans. Was that was that were those really Persians? I thought they were heavy knights. I could have been totally wrong. It says zero right now. The frames the frames are like under 20 frames. But still like, if we play tabs, which, by the way, those animations, the physics-based combat is freaking amazing, and I think that's why. But I can't fit more than, like, two to three hundred entities on on a map until it lags. So that's, you know, there's a trade-off, right? You can have huge battles. Yeah, these guys don't look very Persian to me. So this is 50,000 versus 50,000, I'm assuming. It's going to be interesting to see the enemies killed and to see, look at that. I like how when they're charging... It's not a perfect, you know, line. And look at that. Some units go straight past each other and then start in combat. But as the animations develop, you can, I would imagine, like, units charging and bumping people over, like, shield pushing enemies on top of each other, just bucking them over, people throwing spears. Because the cool thing about Roman soldiers, look at this. This is like a million ants, man. Can you imagine? And then, in first person, you could be one unit. Oh my god, this is, it almost makes me dizzy, like, trying to process this. And what's insane is, historically, there are battles where there's, like, 50,000 versus 50,000 people. There have been battles with armies that big and bigger on the same field of battle, which blows my freaking mind. There would be mountains of bodies, there would be rivers of blood. The, like, the, the ground underneath your feet would turn to mud from blood. It truly kind of, you know, lends a preview to the horrors of war. But I think this was a world record. I don't think anyone's done 100,000. I think that's what he was going for. So while the frames are dropping, he is making history right here. And you got to respect that. So it, it doesn't look like they're tracking kills or how many entities are on the board. So we can't see that. But it, I, I wonder how the Centurions would do. How the Romans would do, rather. Not Centurions. The Romans would do it. The Roman Legionnaires. Are they Legionnaires, Centurions? The Legion. For the Legion. 
But yeah, so Roman soldiers would have these big shields. They'd have these pili, these smaller spears that they would throw at the enemy. And they would throw them and they'd have these long, slender spear tips. And from one of the sources that I read, the idea behind that was enemy soldiers would also have shields, right? But if you throw this long, slender spear and it pierces the shield, it may not hurt the guy. It may not hit their arm. It may not hit them. However, it would hit the enemy shield. It would pierce it. And then it, and then it would stay in there. Because it was, it was designed to penetrate enemy armor, right? So then you've got, like, imagine you holding a shield and all of a sudden this giant pili, this giant spear sticking out of it. It makes it very awkward to use and it'd be hard to get out. So then you kind of either have to use that or drop your shield. And then they close in with their shields and their swords and their combat discipline and they would overwhelm their foes. The Roman army was one of the best armies that ever walked the face of the world. Look at that. Look at that one little gap on the map. Uh, because of that, it looks like a fallen column. And it seems like there's either a camp or a battle in the background. Anyway, guys, that's pretty epic stuff. This is Hello. Epic Battle Simulator. Total, or ultimate epic battle simulator by Brilliant Game Studios. A one-man one shop. It truly is a beautiful-looking game. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Baron. Let me know. If you'd like to see more Epic Battle Simulator, as soon as I can get my hands on this game, I will. Unfortunately, Robert, the developer of this game, has said that I'm able to use the footage to show off to you guys, and that he'd greatly appreciate it. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. You guys love the first video, so let me know if you want more, because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. But the big question for you guys, from me, is not only do you want to see more, but what battle, when we get this, when we do get this, what battle should we recreate first? There's so many, so many epic battles. Like from movies, from Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, the Hobbit series. I mean, you got the battles of the five armies. You could do huge historic ones like the battle of, you know, I'm going to say it wrong. Platea, basically right after the battle of Thermopylae. You know, the battle of Cannae. There's epic battles we could do, guys. Anyway. See you guys in the next video.